Okay, so um, I'll let you know starting off that this is a third grade classroom and prior to the lesson that I'm going to start with you guys, I, we would have brainstormed a little bit as a class about the events of 9-11 and um, just kind of found out what the kids know, what they don't know, and had some class conversation about that. And now we'll begin. So our lesson today is based on the book 14 Cows for America. Um, the learning target for today is to discuss how the parts of the story give a deeper understanding for the culture of the Maasai people and the gravity of the events of 9-11. Through annotation and discussion, we'll determine the central theme of the story. Um, some academic language that you're going to hear today and things that we've talked about leading up to this are how we integrate our ideas and um, the themes that we hear in the story with things that we are familiar with in our own daily life and how we will, through small group and full class discussion, kind of come to a consensus on some of these things. Um, we'll synthesize our ideas and we will use annotation to help us through our thought process. So we're going to talk about some of the vocabulary you're going to see in the book today that you might not be familiar with. Um, Maasai is a semi-nomadic group in Kenya and Tanzania, and the measure of a man's wealth in this culture is in terms of his cattle and children. So you can see um, in the photograph, the Maasai people tend to wear bright red clothing and they have very ornate neck collars. Nomadic um, is a term of uh, culture or people who live by traveling from place to place. So instead of having a permanent residence, they will actually move um, based on where their livestock or cattle needs to roam. And so they will have homes maybe built of tents or mud, um, things like that that they could actually bring with them as they go. Provoked is a word that means to stimulate or give rise to. Um, a reaction to something, and so you can see in the photo that the little boy seems angry or frustrated. But we can also be provoked to um, feel compassion or empathy or love. Um, an elder is someone in a community, a leader or a senior figure in a group or a tribe or a community. So here you see someone from an African tribe, but you also to think of a grandparent or someone like that in your family or community. And sacred. Sacred is um, something that's worthy of spiritual respect or devotion. So here we have a picture of cross from the Christian faith. But in different cultures, different things are sacred. Um, so in the Maasai culture, the cow or cattle are very sacred. And a diplomat is a person who is appointed to represent a government. So, um, and, and they work with other people representing other governments. So you see here a photograph of two people representing two different governments coming together. All right, so now I'm actually gonna read the story to you and then after the story we will um, have some small group activity and then come together as a class. It's 14 cows for America. The remote village waits for a story to be told. News travels slowly to this corner of Kenya. As Kameli nears his village, he watches a herd of bull giraffes cross the open grassland. He smiles. He has been away a long time. A girl sitting under a guava tree sees him first and cries out to the others. The children run to him with the speed and grace of cheetahs. He greets them with a gentle touch on the head, a warrior's blessing. The rest of the tribe soon surrounds Kameli. These are his people. These are the Maasai. Once they were feared warriors. Now they live peaceably as nomadic cattle herders. They treat their cows as kindly as they do their children. They sing to them, they give them names, they shelter the young ones in their homes. Without the herd, the tribe might starve. To the Masan, the cow is life.
Supa. Hello, Kameli hears again and again. Everyone wants to greet him. His eyes find his mother across the Enkang, the ring of huts with their roofs of sun-baked dung. She spreads her arms and calls to him. Akua, welcome, my son. Kameli sighs. He is home. This is sweeter and sadder because he cannot stay. He must return to the faraway country where he is learning to be a doctor. He thinks of New York then, and he remembers September. A child asks if he has brought any stories. Kameli nods. He has brought with him one story. It has burned a hole in his heart. But first, he must speak with the elders. Later, in a tradition as old as the Maasai, the rest of the tribe gathers under an acacia tree to hear the story. There is a terrible stillness in the air as the tale unfolds. With growing disbelief, men, women, and children listen. Buildings so tall they can touch the sky, fires so hot they can melt iron, smoke and dust so thick that they can block out the sun. The story ends. More than 3,000 souls are lost. A great silence falls over the Maasai. Kameli waits. He knows his people. They are fierce when provoked, but easily move to kindness when they hear of suffering or injustice. At last, an elder speaks. He is shaken, but above all else, he is sad. What can we do for these poor people? Nearby, a cow lows, heads turned toward the herd. To the Maasai, Kameli says softly, the cow is life. Turning to the elders, Kameli offers his only cow in Karas. He asks for their blessing. They give it gladly, but they want to offer something more. The tribe sends word to the United States Embassy in Nairobi. In response, the embassy sends a diplomat. His jeep jounces along the dusty, rugged roads. He is hot and tired. He thinks he is going to meet with Maasai elders. He cannot be more wrong. As the jeep nears the edge of the village, the man sits up. Clearly, this is no ordinary diplomatic visit. This is a ceremony. Hundreds of Maasai greet the American in full tribal splendor. At the sight of the brilliant blood-red tunics and spectacular beaded collars, he can only marvel. It is a day of sacred ritual. Young warriors dance, leaping into the air like fish from a stream. Women sing mournful songs. Children fill their bellies with milk. Speeches are exchanged. And now it is time. Kameli and his people gather together on a sacred knoll far from the village. The only sound is the gentle chiming of cowbells. The elders chant a blessing in Ma as the Maasai people of Kenya present 14 cows for America. Because there is no nation so powerful it cannot be wounded, nor a people so small they cannot offer mighty comfort. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to have you guys break up into groups of about four or five, and I'm going to give you an excerpt from the story, and I'd like you to read that together. You can either um, pick one person to read it out loud, or you can read it silently. And then I want you to take some time to annotate in the margins thoughts that you have, reactions, words that you think um, kind of synthesize and pull together the, the message of this excerpt, um, maybe comparing and contrasting how it's different from our culture in the United States. And then after about a minute, we'll uh, switch and you'll get another excerpt. We'll probably do that once or twice, depending on time, and then we'll come together as a class and share what you guys have found. So, how many groups have four? Yeah,
Anything, I guess, annotating is kind of just taking notes. Or, I mean, I guess in connection with 9 11, mm -hmm. it's just, um, it's, yeah, it's similar. Um, people, people are easily moved. Right. There's some type of chaos or catastrophe. Mm -hmm. What are you writing down? Um, similar to 9-11, people are moved emotionally. Or they experience tragedy. <laughs> when they experience tragedy. So I guess um, this is kind of they are fierce when provoked, but easily moved to kindness. Um, this just kind of reminds me of um, if you make them angry, <laughs> they can be they can fight, they can be warriors, kind of. Um, but at the same time, they have this kindness of when they hear of suffering. So it's like a double-sided. They can be... Depends on the circumstances. Yeah, what? Depends, depends right. on the circumstances. Right, depends on the circumstances. They can be fierce or they can be um, soft. Yeah, peaceful. Okay, why don't you guys um, switch with another group? African American guy, I forget his name, who was awarded some, something for his uh, heroic actions in the, in the attack on the Pearl Harbor. Like he was, I, th I think he was just a, 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 yeah, he was a cook in the ship. Okay, go ahead and switch. So like, he was just a normal cook, a normal guy. Another group. The rest of the tribe gathers under a tree to hear the story. There is a terrible stillness in the air as the tale unfolds. With growing disbelief, men, women, and children listen. Buildings so tall they can touch the sky, fire so hot they can melt iron, smoke and dust so thick they can block out the sun. Um, I think there's, here there's like striking differences between the two yeah. cultures. I mean, not only are they learning about, you know, buildings and fires that terrible like for the first time. But it, yeah, it's also the way they communicate, which the, they've the gotten up there. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, it's more of a one yeah. relationship yeah. that we have. But there's almost just, yeah, disbelief yeah. that all that existed and something so terrible could it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 